Good evening, and welcome to the Jewish Community Relations Council's fourth behind-the-scenes celebration. My name is Rosalind Franklin, and I am proud to serve as the president of JCRC's Board of Directors. Thank you. Tonight, we are delighted to honor three special community champions, Mark Dollinger, Sissy Swig, Sissy Swig, and the Reverend Dr. Paul Walter Mulder. Each has in individually contributed so much to the Jewish and broader Bay Area community through their professional and volunteer efforts. It is a pleasure for me to share the podium with these honorees this evening. They are an inspiration and demonstrate their passion, values, and dedication about you will, which learn, you will learn more in the videos that you will see a little later in the program. I would like to recognize the elected officials who have joined us here this evening. We greatly appreciate their attendance, public service, and cooperation on a continued basis. Please hold your applause until the end. San Francisco Assessor Recorder Carmen Chu, San Francisco City Attorney Dennis Herrera, San Francisco Supervisor Scott Wiener, San Mateo Supervisor Dan Pine, Dave, excuse me, Dave Pine, Oakland Council Member Dan Kalb, Burlingame Mayor Terry Nagel, Hillsborough Council Member Sean Christiansen, San Francisco Board of Education President Emily Morrissey, San Francisco Board of Education Commissioner Shaman Walton, San Francisco Board of Education Commissioner Jill Wins, Commissioner on the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights and California State University Trustee Roberta Actenberg, former Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley, former State Senator Quentin Kopp, former Hillsborough Mayor Tom Kasten, former Supervisor Barbara Kaufman, Israeli Deputy Consul General Eyal Neol, and Dan Bernal, District Director and his staff in the Office of Leader Nancy Pelosi, and Ellen Ginsberg from the Office of Congress Member Jackie Speer. <laughs> JCRC has had another busy year, not only making sure that the Jewish community is strong, but ensuring its own growth and sustainable future. Like every healthy and responsible organization, with much thought and deliberation, we announced the planned succession of our superb executive director, Rabbi Doug Khan, upon his retirement in 2016. JCRC has grown exponentially, has earned an outstanding reputation, and is critical to the Bay Area Jewish landscape under his remarkable, dedicated, and visionary leadership. We are fortunate that Abby Michelson Porth, our Associate Ex Executive Director, with her tremendous skills, will assume the role in 2016. I feel privileged to be able to serve as JCRC's president at this particular time in the organization's history as well as this time for the Jewish community. The work and expertise that JCRC offers is in more demand than ever because of the significant challenges we continue to face as a community, both here and abroad. My background is from a family deeply committed to hands-on service to the Jewish community. Both my father and grandfather served as chairman of the principal Jewish charity in the United Kingdom, and in 1938, my grandfather, at the request of the British Home Office, established an organization designed to accelerate the admission of refugees from Germany and Austria, which resulted in saving the lives of many Jews who would have otherwise been trapped in 1939. It is with this history that I feel compelled to honor and continue their commitment and vigilance through my efforts here at home in America. JCRC's work in pursuit of a just society and secure Jewish future could not happen without the commitment to building bridges cooperatively among diverse individuals, communities, and organizations, both Jewish and non-Jewish, throughout the Bay Area. JCRC is a convener 
of people and of ideas, to amplify our voices and advocacy impact. And now, more than ever, our collective voices are necessary to be heard loudly and clearly, to decry the hate and anti-Semitic rhetoric and actions that have become pervasive in our own backyard and across the globe in the name of religion and misrepresented ideals. Action that even five years ago would have been unimaginable in the free world. As president of JCRC, I challenge our community and other faith communities to raise our voices in outrage against the assault on our values, against the threat to our peace and security, and the threat to our democratic and inclusive society. At JCRC, we take our role very seriously as the voice of the organized Jewish community and also work hard to collaborate on domestic issues to better our society from, quali from quality public education to immigration reform, engaging in the broad civic issues that are so important to a healthy, vibrant society and United States of America. Whether on the domestic scene or in combating anti-Semitism, as a community, we must be increasingly proactive. And we must continue to work as a community together to halt the spread of misinformation from the BDS movement to delegitimize the state of Israel and fight against the rise of global anti-Semitism and bigotry of all kinds. While these are critical themes that JCRC, and I know, the community will be grappling with, with now into the future, we are really here tonight to celebrate our outstanding honorees and share the valuable and critical work of the J Jewish Community Relations Council. I want to additionally, additionally acknowledge JCRC's outstanding lay leadership and thank our dedicated and extremely capable staff with a special thank you to John Feldman and Mackenzie Means for their phenomenal work on tonight's event. Finally, I would like to thank and honor each one of you. It is gratifying and encouraging to see the tremendous support you show by being here this evening in support of our work. And it is now my privilege and pleasure to introduce our event chairs. Tonight's success would not be have been possible without their fresh ideas and imagination, along with their passion and commitment. Please join me in welcoming Drs. Gary Rant and Kathy Fields Rant. You don't mind if we squeeze, do you? <laughs> Publicly? Cool. Thank you, Roslyn, for being part of the British Jewish invasion and for epitomizing my motto, dress British, think Yiddish, and invest in the future. <laughs> we are thrilled to co-chair this year's behind-the-scenes celebration in honor of our community's champions. We are also delighted because it is for an organization whose work is proactive in every way. <laughs> From being on the front lines for our community on every issue of vital concern to being the first responders when any Jewish institution needs assistance on a sensitive community relations issue, JCRC sets the bar high for effective action, collaborative work, and strategic initiatives. JCRC understands that having a real impact from addressing growing Israel-related challenges on Bay Area campuses to establishing a community model for responding to the scourge of global anti-Semitism requires building and nurturing relationships day in and day out with the broader community. And today's event is a celebration of relationship building and real impact by an organization which does not often tout its accomplishments because its success, its success so often is achieved behind the scenes. Today, we shine a spotlight on some of JCRC's work and individuals whose exceptional leadership helps to achieve that impact. We would like to begin by extending special thanks to those who have joined us as premier sponsors. David and Ann Becker. The Friend Family. Nancy and Stephen Grand. Rosalind C. Swig. Ingrid Tauber and Frank Taforo. And Diane and Howard Zack. Yes, good. Thank you. And to our star sponsors. The Dolinger family. Dr. Anita Friedman and Igor Tartakovsky. 
Lisa and Douglas Goldman Fund. And Lisa and John Pritzker. Thank you also to the host committee and our many generous sponsors. All are listed in tonight's program that you hold and deserve tremendous gratitude. It is thanks to contributors like you and all our attendees that JCRC has grown and met challenge after challenge and is able to continue its vitally important work. Tonight, we are giving much deserved honor and recognition to three extraordinary individuals whose courage and outstanding contributions truly exemplify JCRC's values. Professor Mark Darlinger. As well as being a lauded educator, an expert in Jewish studies, a tireless advocate for students and education, acting as a leader for inclusiveness and awareness of Jewish issues at his university and society at large. The Reverend Dr. Paul Watermulder. <laughs> Dr. Watermulder has moved his Presbyterian community towards increased interfaith cooperation through an extraordinary and inspiring relationship with Peninsula Temple Shalom. And to our beloved, Sissy Swig. <laughs> a leading community activist who has worked with JCRC for decades. She promotes strong connections between civic society and our vibrant Jewish community, as well as the arts, women, and young people, and Israel-American relations. It is fitting that her award is inspired by the remarkable and tireless Rita Semmel, Executive Director Emerita of JCRC. Tonight, we recognize these three exemplary individuals and tell their stories of leadership and courage and their partnership with JCRC in pursuit of a just society and secure Jewish future. And now, it is our pleasure to introduce Barry and Debbie Cohn for the presentation of the JCRC Courageous Leadership Award. Thank you, Gary and Kathy. Good evening, everyone. It is a double blessing for us to stand here tonight and applaud the outstanding work of JCRC and our dear friend Mark Dollinger. We honestly feel qualified for this duty. As students in the 1980s of Hebrew Union College, aptly represented here tonight by its president, Rabbi Aaron Pankin, we trained to become community relations professionals and we're exceptionally fortunate to be mentored by the best in the business. I worked for Earl, Rita, and Doug at the JCRC. And I worked with Naomi Lauder at APAC. From campus Israel activism, to Soviet Jewry, to legislative advocacy, our appreciation and understanding of the challenges and rewards of community relations work is truly etched in our minds. Thank you, Doug and Abby, and the entire JCRC team for your work is often unseen, but is always essential for a healthy and safe Jewish life. You do it incredibly admirably, admirably. Community relations is not for the faint of heart, especially in the Bay Area. It requires intellect, courage, diplomacy, and infinite, infinite patience. Not everyone has what it takes, but Mark Dollinger does. I've known Mark since the 1970s, when we were but youth wandering the sacred grounds of UAHC Camp Swig with its focus on tikkun olam. Then, as sophomoric students in the early 1980s, sharpening our skills in the hallowed halls and contested Sproul Plaza of UC Berkeley. As adults, we have passed the baton of Jewish education as uh, from uh, Jewish education presidencies, I should say, from BHDS to JCHS, from campfires to rallies to boardrooms to meetings after meetings after meetings. <laughs> we have witnessed the depth of Mark's skill set and his ability to do the challenging and courageous work of community relations with grace and humility. Through our many years of activism, we sought out the guidance and participation of professors who resisted the public arena. 
Mark is not that type of person. Mark is in constant search of context. He wants to understand the reaction of every action, and then he wants to share it so that everyone understands the how and the why. Mark not only looks for the teachable moment, but he wants to speak truth to power. Many of you know that Mark, an esteemed professor, historian, and proud Jew. But our, great, our greatest admiration is for Mark, the family man. Despite all of his professional and communal commitments, he is first and foremost a loving husband and partner to Marcy, a deeply devoted dad and champion of Ribby and Shana, a loving son and son-in-law, and an exceptionally thoughtful and generous friend. So thank you, JCRC, for bestowing the Courageous Leadership Award on Mark Dollinger. And if we haven't adequately explained why, please watch the screen. Mark is always trying to find teachable moments. And uh, it doesn't matter the topic or the time, but Mark is constantly focused on learning and teaching. I went off to college with full intentions to become an attorney and then ended up uh, being a substitute teacher for an eighth grade religious school class at Temple Sinai in Oakland. And I walked into that classroom, uh, an attorney in training, and I walked out a classroom educator. I first met Mark as a sophomore at San Francisco State University. I was a marketing major at the time, set to go into luxury brand management, and I took introduction to Jewish studies to fulfill a cultural requirement for my major. And it really changed the way I thought about myself and thought about my community and thought about the role I could play in that community. I really enjoyed um, being a non-Jewish student in a Jewish classroom. Um, because I had the feeling that I could bring an interesting new perspective to um, the topics we were talking about in class, um, but also I um, got to know different Jewish perspectives from my other classmates. I think education is a social experience, and that is if your students are engaged with one another and their instructor in a trusting uh, atmosphere, then they're going to learn more and they're going to enjoy it too. Crayola Crayon Company called it flesh. Then they realized, as you were pointing out, that uh, not all people are the equivalent of white, so they renamed it Peach. Anyone remember Professor Dollinger is famous for his two Crayola Crayons yeah. lectures. So at the beginning of the semester, he would always deliver um, one lecture about the importance of Crayola Crayons. And um, at the end of the um, semester, he would um, talk about yes. Crayola Crayons. Indian red, and we wondered, wow, where's Caucasian white, Mexican brown, Asian yellow, right? And I just want you to have a little bit of humility to know as smart as you are now, there's still Indian red hanging out there, and your educations don't end in this class, they don't end at this university. In fact, it is a lifelong pursuit. Good afternoon and welcome to Jewish Studies in the Creole. As you might imagine, Jewish life uh, at SF State is intensely political. This campus went through some extraordinarily difficult times. We got put on National Hill's list as the most uh, anti-Semitic campus in the United States. For me, coming from the Midwest, the, the whole issue of the campus debate about Jewish studies, about divestment, about boycotts and things like that was a very new experience for me. I would often call Mark and say, I don't get this. How do I think better about it? Mark has been invaluable in helping sort of sandwich with Hillel and the Jewish Studies Department in helping Jewish students work through difficult times on campus. One of Mark uh, Dollinger's um, significant contributions to the campus has been to work with the administration and uh, with other faculty uh, in supporting Jewish students, giving them a voice, giving them counsel, uh, going to bat for them when they were being attacked. 
any time there was any threat or perceived threat to Jewish students or Jewish life, that the president would call together um, what we called the family, and it included JCRC. For me, as a professor of Jewish studies at SF State, uh, JCRC is one deep breath. It's the knowledge of knowing that whatever could come down on campus for us will be met and partnered with an organization that will stand up and make the fight privately or publicly that we need to have made. For years, Doug and I have been meeting with Mark at the Dipsy Cafe. When we get together and over eggs and hash browns, we bring out our three agendas. There's the behind the scenes issues agenda, there's the way behind the scenes agenda, and then the really way, way behind the scenes issues that we're gonna discuss. Before I started, Dr. Corrigan took me out to lunch, and he told me, you can spend your whole career in your office writing books and teaching students in the classroom, but I would prefer to have you in the community. We need a public intellectual in Jewish studies. Mark is very, very special, and we're very fortunate to have him. Um, his feet are on the ground. Uh, he has a great sense of the community. Uh, and I think his sense of how Jewish studies fits the broader picture of intellectual life uh, alongside world events, alongside historical events, has been critically important. Mark has this incredible way of getting out on the table all of the really complicated and interesting ideas. He takes uh, an issue and like a Rubik's Cube, looks at it from 16 different angles, and just at the moment where you think everything is really complicated, suddenly the strategy and the approach that we need becomes quite clear and very simple. Mark drills down into what the meaning of, uh, of a particular action is or a particular, a particular way of thinking um, and how that, uh, that thought process develops, moves the community. Mark's been very helpful as we develop our approach or a strategy for dealing with very complex and very sensitive community relations issues, from helping us prepare for a debate on KQED's The Forum, uh, dealing with the circumcision ban, to helping us think through issues of Jewish concern in the public schools, uh, to helping us really prepare for, in a very meaningful way, the meetings that we're going to have with other ethnic minority groups. Mark is not afraid to take on leadership roles. It makes a lot of sense that Mark would be getting the Courageous Leadership Award. As an academic, it's somewhat rare that, uh, that those individuals blur the lines of academia and uh, lay engagement. Mark uh, takes it on with a vengeance. Uh, looking ahead, our country and in fact the world is facing incredible challenges in intergroup relations. Uh, I'm deeply involved now in research on Jews and whiteness and power and privilege and intergroup relations. So I hope going forward that as a public intellectual I can go into the community and help folks decipher the incredible complex world in which we live. present Mark with this commissioned, absolutely extraordinarily gorgeous tzedakah box etched with the images of San Francisco. And it reads, JCRC Courageous Leadership Award presented to Mark Dollinger, PhD, for his tireless commitment to educating young people and creating a safe and thriving campus environment for Jewish and all students. Marcy, Rivi, Shana, and I moved to the Bay Area 13 years ago. Tonight's simcha seems kind of like my professional bar mitzvah. 
And to celebrate, I've indulged myself with a few presents. A cross pen, engraved with my name. A transistor radio. And a copy of Irving Howe's mammoth World of Our Fathers. Marcy's life mantra is gratitude, acknowledging and appreciating the blessings we enjoy. The last 13 years have been a blessing for us. Tonight's honor and opportunity to express it. On March 26, 2001, my birthday, SF State President Emeritus and JCRC Leadership Award winner Dr. Robert Corrigan took me out to lunch to talk about Richard and Rhoda Goldman of blessed memory of the legacy that they were leaving and of the creation of the Goldman Chair. You can spend your whole life writing books and teaching students, he said, but I really want you out in the community with a high profile as our city's public intellectual in Jewish studies. Thank you, Dr. Corrigan, for paving this road, for inspiring me to engage SF State's mission of social justice and civic engagement, for making all that I do in the community part of my responsibility as a member of the faculty of San Francisco State University. And with this, what a joy it is for me to prove to a whole bunch of you that I actually do have a day job. <laughs> I am thrilled as well to welcome and introduce our current SF State President, Dr. Les Wong. Soon after taking the job, Dr. Wong joined JCRC on a civic leadership journey to Israel. And only after I was somehow invited to present for a pro-BDS academic association did I learn that Dr. Wong had already gone on record with a strong and brave anti-boycott position. Thank you, Dr. Wong, for your leadership. When I was invited to interview for the Goldman Chair, I reached out to my academic mentor, Dr. Bruce Schulman. His advice, grow a beard. <laughs> Why? Because you're 32 years old and they don't hire 32-year-olds to be endowed chairs. I pushed back. I'm 36 years old. Ah, Bruce said, but you look like you're 32. Thank you to my boss and dear friend, Professor Fred Astrin, Department Chair of Jewish Studies, for looking at a 36-year-old community college professor and seeing the Goldman Chair. I engage in Jewish life because I'm passionate about community relations, about how we understand one another, and most of all, how we treat each other. And this is JCRC's very mission. For me, JCRC bridges the town-gown divide. Thank you, Doug, Abby, John, Joe, Eliza, Jessica, the whole team, for your understanding that our university culture works differently, at times very differently than the organized Jewish world. Without judgment and with uncompromising support, you have all reached out on our terms to help in ways that are critical to ensure a safe learning environment for Jewish students. That's community relations at its best, and that's why JCRC is my first call behind the scenes. Tonight's honor resonates with me in a deep and personal way. As you heard, I've known Barry and Debbie Cohn since we were undergrads at Berkeley. Barry's dad and my dad, both here tonight, were classmates at Burlingame High School. And when I came north, Barry took me in, mentored me, brought me into lay leadership, first at Brandeis Hillel, and now with the Jewish Community High School. Barry and Debbie, what an honor to be honored by you. Thank you. It is a rare privilege to get to know exactly when your life transformed for the better. For me, it was between June 24th and July 6th, 1975 at Camp Swig, where as an 11-year-old camper, I began learning what it meant to live a Jewish life. Living Judaism, as we called it at camp, informs my every decision. As a scholar and teacher, as a husband and dad, as a Jewish educator, committed to learning what it means to be Jewish and live a Jewish life every day of the year. What a joy then it is to share this evening with Sissy Swig, whose family legacy shaped my Jewish identity and whose inspiring work in so many arenas K-12 
carries that leadership legacy here in the Bay Area and far, far beyond. In my, final, in my end of semester final lecture, I offer students my definition of a hero, a person who risks their own power and privilege to help someone else, a simple definition that so few of us ever achieve. Pastor Paul is a hero. I am honored to stand alongside you, and I hope that this evening is just the beginning of a long-lasting friendship. With the privilege of tenure and the leadership platform you have all collectively gifted to me, I get the opportunity to complicate your narratives, and I hope inspire new and different ways of thinking about Jewish history and Jewish life. I offer gratitude to the many of you who have invited me in to challenge your status quo. What a joy to reflect this evening back to my parents. My mom and dad, Malin and Lenore, are here tonight from Los Angeles. And if anyone calls out Dr. Dollinger, all three of us will flinch. <laughs> I love you both and celebrate that you are here tonight. I'd like to say that tonight's honor and the last 13 years in Bay Area Jewish life has been a dream come true. It hasn't, because this is something I could have never imagined. Thank you. Thank you, Barry and Debbie. Congratulations, Mark. To introduce tonight's second award, it's our pleasure to invite Mark and Gila Anderson Abelson, sorry, to the stage. About 22 years ago, Paul Watermolder and I had been volunteered by our wives to schlep a bunch of tables, a bunch of ladders, and banners at the Burrell Middle School Cultural Fair. The purpose of the fair was to educate and celebrate the many heritages of the diverse middle school student body. Who better to do all this work than their lucky husbands? Each year, Paul and I got to know each other better, as we had the pleasure of doing this for a number of years. Paul was extremely friendly. He never complained about schlepping. He was modest. He was even self-effacing. As the years went by, I learned of his convictions, of his first career as a Berkeley police officer, and we made sure that we were not there at the same time, and that he never chased me or any of my friends. His love of people and his love of faith. As he, a years later, when Gila and I first learned that the Presbyterian Church was uh, going to go public about a potential BDS resolution, the first thing that we thought of was to call Paul and Jeannie. We met for dinner, the meal arrived, Paul asked us to hold hands and to say a prayer of thanks. Paul talked about his convictions and his deep opposition to the BDS resolution and told us of the work that he and Doug Henneke were going to be doing to oppose it. That evening, I knew that we, as a Jewish community, could, ca could count on the Reverend Paul Watermolder to act on his convictions. Why did we reach out to Paul? And why are all of us in this room supporters of JCRC? Paul and JCRC epitomize and share a trait. Paul is an individual, and the JCRC is a community organization. The trait is one of courage, courage especially in the time of need. As the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. 
We're very proud that the JCRC has shown the wisdom to bestow this honor on the Reverend Paul Watermulder. Paul has been a great voice and a leader in the Presbyterian Church and a great friend to the Jewish community and other people because of where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. And, and now we invite you to get a more intimate um, look at this fantastic, wonderful man. Paul's interest uh, in Israel goes all the way back to his childhood. His dad, a Presbyterian pastor, had a strong relationship with the local Jewish temple, so much so that the rabbi invited Paul's mom and dad to go with a group of rabbis to Israel on a trip with them, and that made a great impression on Paul. My life really is, is meant to be in service to others. That's how I, I guess I get my, uh, my joy and my self-definitions. The tipping point for, um, for my career change from uh, police to, um, to preacher, uh, from uh, badge to Bible, um, gun to gospel, uh, was uh, a meeting I had with my father in a hotel room in Chicago. He asked me, what would you do if you could do anything at all and money was no object? And I replied, I'd go to seminary. When Paul came, Paul made a concerted effort to reach out, uh, first with Rabbi Raskin and then with Rabbi Feeder. Rabbi Jerry Raskin really was a mentor to me in ministry when I got here. The relationship really took hold when the news one morning had an accounting of a gunman in Los Angeles who had intentionally shot children at a Jewish preschool. I went to the florist and got flowers and came up and gave those to the receptionist at PTS and uh, just told her I wanted uh, the rabbi and the people here to know that our hearts were with them and that we stand with them uh, and that there are Christians who will stand with Jews no matter what. Every time that there was a major incident anywhere in the world that involved the uh, Jewish people or a tragedy regarding Jewish people, he was there, and he was there to express his feelings and his connection. Some of my most special moments as a rabbi have been looking up at P Paul speaking from our bima and addressing our congregation and saying words of understanding and reconciliation, appreciation and uplift. And I'll never forget what it felt like to stand on his bima and to speak to his congregation on a Sunday morning and feel the warmth and the understanding and the appreciation between our communities. Paul loves the association with uh, Temple Shalom. He loves it. Recently, there was a decision on the part of the Presbyterian denomination to boycott businesses that do uh, their work in Israel. I was at the General Assembly meeting in Detroit where the vote was taken in which the movement to divest from three U.S. companies doing business in Israel was passed. As soon as he got back on a Friday night, he said, I went up the hill, went straight to the temple and told them that not in our town and not in our church, that is not the position that we will take. And what he said to us was that he had understood that this was hurtful to the Jewish community and he disagreed with it and it was wrong and, uh, and he apologized personally for his denomination and he used words like, it pains me that this issue is between us. I'm not sure if I wept or not, I suspect I did, uh, but I told them how sorry and I'm ashamed I was and am of my denomination for having taken this position. Paul's courageous actions are deeply appreciated by our community. Even more, knowing that we have a Paul Watermolder in our community to stand up and to defend some of our vital concerns is a source of enormous comfort. 
Paul has been a, a friend of JCRC for many years, and there have been many ways that, that we've worked together. We had the chance at our church to host a, um, a conference, which the JCRC uh, was um, putting together as for Christians and Jews both to understand better uh, the political situation in the Middle East. I'm very pleased to be, to be honored to be a part of this um, whole movement. We live in a world where, where hate can bubble up easily, and rather than succumbing to it or just letting it be, Pastor Paul really rises up and speaks out against it, and he lets his voice be heard, and he knows his voice is powerful. His favorite saying is um, Reverend Niemoyler's saying. He believes that's the most important <laughs> saying that there is, and he lives, he lives like that. He speaks up and so few people speak up. He reaches out to everybody, and he, he loves everyone. And he doesn't um, differentiate and divide. He's aware of people's differences, but he appreciates the difference. Remember when Isaiah pictured the kingdom and said that uh, the wolf shall lie down with the lamb, the, uh, the lion and the fatling together. And this, this, is, this is the kingdom that we're trying to build. Uh, and as God's people in Burlingame or in any community, we're called to be shoulder to shoulder, side by side. Paul does not believe in excluding, but including. Uh, and he often in his sermons refers to a, a short little poem, but I think it so describes the way Paul thinks. And the poem goes, he drew a circle that shut me out, heretic rebel a thing to flout. But love and I had the wit to win. We drew a circle that drew him in. And that describes Paul. I think that the, um, the chances for us to be the, uh, the kind of people God means for us to be with both Jewish and Christian labels um, is, uh, is rich when we have leaders who will, um, who will pursue that vision. So we, it's, our, it's our great honor to call you up, um, Paul, and we're, we're giving you the same Sadaka box that you heard about, and Sadaka boxes people think of as a charity box, but really Sadaka comes from the word tzedek, which is righteousness and justice. And in Deuteronomy, there's a saying, tzedek, tzedek, tirdof, justice, justice shalt thou pursue. And you pursue that so valiantly, you could fill up this whole Tzedakah box. And written on your Tzedakah box is the JCRC Courageous Leadership Award presented to Reverend Dr. Paul Watermulder for, champion, for championing Jewish-Christian relations, including an abiding commitment to Israel's security and building mutual understanding and respect amongst diverse religious groups. Well, thank you. My goodness, I want to know this guy they're talking about. <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> I am honored. I'm humbled. I, you know, I tell my congregation all the time the greatest single uh, gift Jesus gives people is the gift of humbleness, and I'm, you know, I'm really. Um, very appreciative. My Mark and, uh, and Gila have uh, been a part of our lives, and they remind me of the definition, really, of character. And, you know, character is what you will do when nobody else will ever find out. And they have that, and so many of you have that. I'm, uh, I'm overwhelmed tonight. I'm, the, the JCRC is one of the pillar institutions uh, one of too few pillar institutions for the whole Bay Area that uh, give us hope 
that when things are going poorly and when um, extremists are holding forth uh, through the day, uh, that there are those who will consistently and, um, and steadily uh, work for that which is good and right and just and beautiful and wholesome. Um, you should never give the microphone to a preacher. You know, we're worse than, <laughs> we're worse than rabbis. You know, he, <laughs> let us speak. We go on for 20 or 30 minutes. Then we ask for an altar call. So, you know, it's, uh, um, the JCRC does represent just the best of uh, the gift of uh, religious efforts to reconcile rather than polarize and to stand together for something good that is lasting rather than um, apart for something that may have temporary appeal but is fleeting. Uh, I'm really grateful to uh, Rabbi Doug Kahn for his um, consistent friendship and really vision. Um, for um, Pastor Doug Haneke, who cannot be here tonight, Presbyterian minister from Tiburon, and to Mark and Kila, and for so many others. Karen Stiller is a consistent uh, presence on the peninsula for Abby and her work and for all of you. Um, we were able to bring all four of our children here. I've been married for uh, 44 years to my first wife. <laughs> and, and Jeannie. Uh, Jeannie is here, and uh, our children, Rebecca, is our eldest, came in from New York with her husband, Andrew, and then um, David and Lisa from, San, San, from Los Gatos, excuse me, where uh, he's a Presbyterian pastor, and uh, Sarah uh, from uh, San Mateo, and uh, Timothy and his fiance Mia. I'm just very grateful to have all of them see this. Thank you. You're overwhelming. One of my great, greatest um, highlights of my 31 years as pastor um, at the church in Burlingame has been this really close and trusting relationship with the rabbi at uh, Peninsula Temple Shalom, PTS, less than two minutes from our church. And first it was the late, late uh, Rabbi um, Jerry Raskin. What a great picture that was of him up here. And then, you know, it went over to Dan Feeder, who is more my contemporary, not as much my grandfather as Jerry seemed. And, um, and uh, you know, we have a wonderful time together. And we, we try to have lunch every, uh, every month. Dan, it's tomorrow. 12.30, and the, um, the chance for us to discover that God actually is pulling us together and to um, sometimes kind of surprise us that we really and truly are brothers because God is our Father. It's a, it's a terrific relationship. Um, the clergy relationship, though, is really symbolic of the relationship of the temple and the church, uh, our two congregations. Uh, to this day, I meet people on the street, and they remind me that, oh, we met at Peninsula Temple Shalom. And it's like I have two congregations and not just one. And, and I hope the same is for, is for uh, Dan. He really, in many ways, functions as my pastor, which is a, a very high, uh, I, I give him the highest of honor and, um, and joy. The, um, I want to thank all the members of his, of his, of his synagogue um, for being so open to the vision of all of us, all of us expanding um, how God can impact our town through his love by drawing us together. So I want to suggest just for a moment <clears throat> that we're not just talking tonight about healthy relations between a rabbi and a pastor or between a synagogue and a church um, or even, we're not even talking about the noble, but uh, albeit at this time, losing battle among uh, those who have a denominational myopia and insist on, uh, on other uh, approaches to, to this problem in, uh, in the Middle East. I believe that from Bible times, here it is, the key to world peace from Bible times, the key to nothing less than world peace, is found in the quality of Christian-Jewish relationships. Said another way, if Jews and Christians can be of one family and act like it, then I believe God will use that example to calm down the whole world, to point others toward this same good God, Adonai, and away from the various tribalisms and fears that stalk our world. I believe this. The challenge to become as one. Thank you. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> The, the ch thank you. The challenge um, uh, to become as one uh, here and on these matters, therefore, really can be an example which has an actual effect to those who have boots on the ground in Israel and Palestine. 
a two-state solution is possible because Jews and Christians can resolve to act like family. And that, of course, depends on trust, the wonderful world of trust. Relationships are not forged by force. If you face me down with a gun, we're not reconciled. We're waiting for the next chance to do retribution. If I boycott, divest, sanction you, we are not reconciled. We are waiting for the next chance for reprisal. Those are not building reconciliation or relationship or health, right? So tonight, I simply pray that Christians and Jews in the model of the JCRC can trust God enough to care and relate one-on-one, -on -one, church and temple, temple and church, until resignation to the world of hostile camps gives way to reception to the world of the hospitality of God. You see, God is love, and in the end, God, love wins. The psalmist said it best, Psalm 133, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters dwell together in unity, for there is found the blessing, in the unity, is found the blessing life forevermore. May it be so for all of us. God bless you and thank you. Badge to Bible. We're going to use that. Absolutely. Thank you, Mark and Gila. Congratulations, Reverend Dr. Paul. In fact, I'm thinking about church. I don't know about you. And I'm thinking about going to San Francisco State. I wonder if we're connected, if we can take those great classes. You can feel the passion, the joy that these men bring on behalf of us. We're so grateful. All right, now for tonight's final presentation. It is our pleasure to invite Michael and Leslie Krasny to the stage to introduce the JCRC Jewish Civic Leadership Award. It's a great pleasure for us to present this award to Sissy Swig, an extraordinary and inspirational person, a, a person who's a role model to us all. I think uh, I'd like to begin by, and you're going to see some film about Sissy Swig, but just by saying that when I get into a Jewish community center and I think about the Jewish Community Relations Council, and thanks to them, by the way, for making this evening so very special and honoring people that we all feel very attached to and admire very much, uh, but I think of miracles. I think of uh, what we teach in Jewish tradition about, okay, I wrote a book on agnosticism, but that's besides the point. <laughs> I think about the miracle of Moses uh, crossing the Red Sea. I think of the miracle of the Hanukkah lights uh, helping the Maccabees to victory, and these are miracles. I must tell you, Sissy Swig is a miracle. Uh, um, you know, we celebrate these miracles in a religious way or in a secular way or in an agnostic way, but we celebrate her tonight for so many reasons and for so much that she gives to this community. Um, she's one of those individuals that just rises above and makes everyone proud to know her, makes everyone who does know her admire her, and she is an extraordinary woman who gives so much not only to her community, to Israel, to the Jewish people, but to the arts, to education, to NPR. Um, <laughs> there is a generosity of spirit there that seems to be boundless, and which I have looked at in awe, and I have been proud to know her these years. But I must also tell you that the, back to the Jewish tradition, there's this whole idea of kovid or kavod, the Hebrew being kavod and sort of transliterated into Yiddish to be kovid, the idea that we give honor to certain people, and certain people are deserving of honor. And the word even connotes a lot more than honor. It connotes respect, it connotes admiration, it connotes veneration and all of that. And I can't tell you how much I feel that she is deserving of that honor more than almost anyone I know, more deserving of kavod. So I'd like to, uh, as they say in Los Angeles, go to the video. And when you see some of the um, accolades that Sissy gets in this video, I hope you will find them memorable. I also want to say that not only is she to be cherished by this Jewish community and by the community at large, whom she serves in so many different ways, but she has a wonderful family. They're here tonight, a lot of them. Um, 
uh, her grandson Adam, who's talking about his work with community, so the legacy continues. Lovely daughters, who I have the pleasure of knowing, uh, Lauren, Leslie and I all these years, um, Marjorie uh, and Susan, and her wonderful son and daughter-in-law, uh, Rick and Darian. So let's go to the video. I invite all of you to please join me in welcoming our very special guest maestra, Mrs. Rosalind Swing. It just always astonishes me how many things she's involved in, how much she does, how much she accomplishes. Philanthropist, Jewish community leader lifelong Israel activist. She understands the importance of time. She never wastes time. She takes seriously her call to repair the world. It kind of really hit me when my grandmother went to Harvard that I could be more involved. Uh, I was 27 and she was the one going to graduate school. And I said, wait a minute, that should be me. I mean, what does it take to, you know, to unroot and go across the country, you know, to Harvard University? I think in the case of Sissy, it was wanting to stay interesting and curious every day that she possibly can. There's something about what motivates her to constantly want to learn and to be curious and to know about more and more that's almost unquenchable. The, the opportunity to go to Harvard was really a, a big surprise. It was not something that I ever expected. and. Uh, even today, I think to myself, you know, what an extraordinary opportunity that um, was not factored into my life. Don't miss out on an opportunity. Don't allow yourself to close down. Because those opportunities open up another chapter, and that could open up another chapter. She's not only constantly wanting to learn, but do good, virtuous deeds. Sissy is a person of incredible intellect, but she's also a person of great spirituality. Sissy Squig does not seek the spotlight, she seeks solutions. Growing up, my grandmother was very influential, um, teaching us Jewish values, and she'd always have mantras. Uh, one was, know thyself. Know thyself is an absolute prerequisite for really being able to take yourself somewhere else. There comes a time where you have to stand alone and you, you have to reach down inside yourself to figure out who am I and um, what do I really think, what do I really care about. And, uh, and so she's a person where the elevator goes down. Or in West Virginia we say you have to dig a little deeper in the well. Uh, I think many of us are distracted on a daily basis, and you have to bring yourself back to center and understand who you are and why you do what you do and what kind of a contribution you can make to improve the world. She has this remarkable insight into community building. She bridges uh, social, religious, cultural, educational, all the bridges. So. A dynamic icon, really, but often behind the scenes, community activist. In thinking about how many times we have worked with Sissy over the last 25 years, I actually made a list because we have gone to Sissy time and time again in 1993 to help resolve uh, an issue with KQED television over their Middle East coverage. In 2003, when Women Against Rape in San Francisco was requiring interns and volunteers to sign an anti-Zionist loyalty pledge, when a Latino youth organization in the Mission District was putting up a permanent mural that depicted Israel in the most hostile way, with Proposition 8 and opposing uh, the effort to eliminate same-sex marriage in California. Sissy was instrumental in helping KQED and National Public Radio through some pretty difficult times. She was of paramount importance. I can't really emphasize that enough, just in terms of the role she played. It was indispensable. 
My Jewishness is very important. If it's issues that concern the Jewish community, I don't like to hold back from that if I feel it's productive and uh, have something and I have something to say. Last year, when we got wind of the fact that KQED had taken SodaStream off of its membership benefits in response to pressure from the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement against Israel, we immediately asked for a meeting with the top management of KQED, reached out to Sissy, who is a member of the board of the station and a leading Israel activist, and asked if she would join us. And she immediately said, absolutely. She came with us to the meeting. Her forceful presence and her persuasive arguments helped convey to the leadership of the station why we were so concerned and resulted in a very positive outcome at the meeting. In all cases, I really always feel comfortable when the JCRC is involved in the issues that we have in front of us every single day. A few years ago, she convened um, a handful of people and asked the big question, what is the future of the Bayview-Hunters Point community? Doesn't this community deserve to have the best? I think all of us should feel that we individually and collectively have a chance to be civic leaders, do something for our city. The devotion of Sissy to her family is not only to the blessed kids that she has, but also to those that she calls family. She's probably one of the most extraordinary people I know, and that's why I say I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be her friend. Sissy Swig and I have been friends for over 40 years. In that time, you're her, her friend, you're locked in. And you're locked in for life, which is... I love my Nana. To me, she's uh, not just my Nana, but everyone's Nana. It's very important to me to reach out and to uh, be inclusive, if you will. Well, what's inspiring with my, my grandmother is she's in her mid-80s and she's still going strong, and new challenges excite her. It's what she's all about. One of the things that's uh, clear about Sissy is that she lives in the future. She's never satisfied with looking in the rearview mirror and saying, ain't it awful, or didn't we accomplish, or something like that. Um, that game's over. Her game is up ahead of her. And uh, she, lives, she lives in the future for the future for what could be and what's coming. I try to be as positive as possible. I like to be positive. I'm happier when I'm positive. And I like to look forward. Um, I respect the past, but I like to look forward. My grandma has a lot of passions, and fly fishing has definitely become one of them. And people know her in the art world because she's had a major influence and impact there. I can see her up in the Delta on a boat. Fishing is, has become really a wonderful passion and uh, pastime. And I just caught the largest fish I've ever caught. I told the guide, I've created a relationship with this fish. <laughs> We're good friends. Perhaps that's a metaphor with a lot of things that I do in the community. Just standing and putting your rod out there. You are by yourself. Your action is singular. You're responsible for how you cast. You're responsible for catching it. You're responsible for bringing it up so that you can take it out. And you have some help at the end. If it works, you're just, there's a satisfaction that is just wonderful. And when it doesn't work, then you think, you know, it's something I've done, I've got to do it better. I would love her if she was just a regular grandmother, and, but she's not. She's, <laughs> she's really special.
Sissy, can we call you up? It's with great pleasure and honor that we go to the JCRC Jewish Civic, League, Civic Leadership Award, which you see here, with the beautiful, iconic Golden Gate Bridge, presented to Sissy Swig for her lifetime exemplary leadership, promoting a strong civic society, vibrant Jewish community, and abiding connection to Israel. overwhelmed <laughs> and I want to thank you thank you thank you for joining me and joining together tonight to acknowledge this awesome mission and accomplishments of the Jewish Community Relations Council and its professional leaders Doug Kahn Abby Porth, and along with their amazing and deeply respected co-workers and lay leaders led by Rosalind, the current president. I know that Paul and Mark and I are feeling so honored to be standing before you all, our family and our friends, and all who we love, learn from, collaborate with, and work together to make our community, our world, a better place for all people. It's so touching for me to have been introduced by my dear friends, Leslie and Michael, whose friendship, whose individual accomplishments are so valued and so cherished, and I'm really, really honored, and I thank you, thank you so much for that introduction. I'm also greatly honored that the award that I'm receiving was inspired by the indomitable Rita Semmel, who is an agent for change and continues to make a difference in this world every day. And how lucky am I to be standing here tonight knowing so well that I could call any one of you, I could call any one of you out and shout to the world that all of you are making our society, our community better. All that you do to protect the sanctity of life all that you do to protect the best that we have to work tirelessly in your various passions, to do good, to see good, to want good for the future. And that I have the great good fortune, and God willing, will have the opportunity to continue to work with you in the future, bring such a feeling of gratitude to have the health, the curiosity and the agency of obligation and responsibility to keep moving forward to make a difference. I grew up in a family environment where service to others was integral to exercising our Jewish values. Participation was part of the norm and reflecting our sense of tikkun olam, of tzedakah, of havara and finding joy in helping others, working together with others, and improving the lives of others. And I grew up with a deep urgency to be inclusive, to build on my curiosity for differences, 
spiritual, cultural, intellectual, to reach out with respect and to invite dialogue. I love to build bridges of understanding and I love to connect people who I want to have know, to know each other because I think that is so much fun. <laughs> and I know that my life has been all the more enriched, that my mindset all the more ready to learn and understand, and that the joyful discipline of Tikkun Olam has pushed me forward into opportunities to enrich my soul. And that humbles me and creates a wonderful wonderment for such as tonight and days to come. It's my passion for relationship building and for civic engagement that has always drawn me to the JCRC and all of its wonderful work. The respect that I have for the JCRC and its critical mission is over the top. And the anticipation of finding solutions that is palpable within our diverse community has raised the bar of expectations towards the JCRC. And I take great comfort knowing that the leadership is up to the task. I know that the professionals are renowned catalysts for good and for bringing together diverse thought leaders to seek positive resolution through respectful, meaningful dialogue. I know the incredible outreach efforts that go on behind the scenes that raise awareness and that build understanding. And I also know of the potential for incendiary activities which are ready and willing to unwind the tightly woven and historic fabric of our cherished community. And I know that the JCRC is there. And I know and I hope that I can be a better person by association, by appreciating the excellence, the quality, and the commitment of the men and women in the agency and the authenticity of their work. I have observed and shared with my family, and I'm so glad that they're here tonight, and thank you very much, Michael, for, for mentioning them. I've observed and I've shared with my family that with many years behind me, I see indeed that history repeats itself, unfortunately in devastating ways. And it is and always will be our continued responsibility, our obligation to be ahead of the curve in averting disasters that can be averted. We must acknowledge our interdependence and, and put it into practice. Agreeing to disagree and working together in common cause. Sitting together we learn from each other. That is civic engagement. And that is a collaborative effort that can be, that can be, that can produce a sustainable outcome. I encourage all of us to think beyond ourselves for the common good. And as we do, we enrich and we benefit our own lives and those around us. I want to thank my family and the JCRC family and all of you, our dear friends, for enriching my soul with the energy to go forth and do more. As I've said many times, I am a lucky lady. And as I follow the well-known phrase of meetings can be fun, <laughs> it will be a pleasure to be having fun with you for many years to come. <laughs>
Good evening, I'm Doug Kahn, director of the JCRC. And I have to say, you come here tonight with the organization thinking about a million details. And the la one thing you don't allow yourself to think about is how moved you might be uh, from the evening. And I have to say, I have been profoundly moved, and I think all of us have been profoundly moved by the extraordinary stories and accomplishments of our honorees tonight. I have to say we're also moved and gratified that we have our first ever full sellout uh, for a JCRC gala event. So thanks all of you. So what keeps me up at night is a question I get a lot these days. Maybe the right question is what doesn't? The idea that the taboo on anti-Semitism is eroding and at an accelerated rate with the fading of memory combined with pathological hatred of Israel fueling the flames, this is a real danger to the well-being of our people, and that keeps me up at night. From the ominous signs from Paris to Buenos Aires, from the Oakland port to UC Davis, this is not a business-as-usual moment in Jewish history. What also keeps me up, the possibility that my, our beloved Bay Area, a bastion of tolerance, is rapidly becoming less tolerant of supporters of Israel. Today, with an astonishing 130 plus organizations that support the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, 79 of which marched under the banner, Zionism is not welcome in our town at the Oakland port. The huge differential between the resources that Israel's detractors have in the Bay Area and what we have to meet those challenges, the constant testing of the big tent the umbrella that JCRC provides for the community and that is essential to the effectiveness of our work, and genuinely believing that the well-being of the community rests on our shoulders as every day we serve as the first responders for Jewish institutions of every kind on critical and sensitive issues and wondering how we can possibly keep up with the demand for our services, though somehow we do. Less often asked, is what lets me sleep at night, as if I could. And so I'll start with saying people who step up time and time again, especially when they don't have to, including tonight's honorees. Sissy Swig, who does not need one more meeting to go to, but says yes every time we have asked, because she knows her voice will help tremendously when we meet with the leadership of KQED, and I want to add how responsive they've been, and we're thrilled their leadership is here with us tonight. The Archbishop, the top officials of City Hall and elsewhere. Sissy, you possess a rare combination of having the instant access of a VIP and the heart and instinct and soul of a political activist, and we are all the beneficiaries. <laughs> Mark Dollinger has plenty to do on campus and in his lay leader roles but values our need to ground our activism in an historically authentic way, and therefore willingly plays the role of invaluable resource. And I might add, we're waiting for our next triple agenda breakfast at the Dipsy. And Reverend Paul Watermolder, who could easily remain on the sidelines as his denomination singles out Israel, but whose conscience won't allow him to stay silent because he values and honors relationships and friendships too much. Paul, what it has meant for our community when you opened up your church and hosted a major conference focusing on investing in peace instead of divesting from Israel. And you too are a true and treasured friend. How fortunate we are to have such exemplars of stellar leadership and to have the privilege of honoring you tonight. What else allows me and us hopefully to sleep at night? the exceptional lay leaders, professional staff, supporters of JCRC, all of you who make every day at work a blessing, a collaboration, and a continuing education, including Rosalind Franklin, who is not only a treat to listen to whenever she speaks, but who demonstrates daily extraordinary leadership and vision as our president, and our officers, our board, our council members, our staff, 
And I want to join together in once again a shout out to John and Mackenzie and Jeremy and our incredible team who did so much to make tonight happen. And let me add <laughs> one more great debt of thanks for our brilliant filmmakers, Bethany and Barry. And what lets me sleep, the fact that the future of JCRC and our community is in the best possible hands as Abby Porth, who for 15 years has been an exceptional professional partner at JCRC, assumes the position of executive director next year in July 2016, knowing that she will take JCRC to new heights with her remarkable vision and leadership skills. And Abby, I know that only leaves 16 months to eradicate anti-Semitism and solve, and solve the Middle East crisis. <laughs> and what lets me sleep at night, the growing recognition in our community that JCRC's role is more critical than ever, from convening to mobilizing, from organizing to modeling civil discourse, from crisis intervention to advocacy, from coalition building to intergroup relations. And the fact that the Bay Area Jewish community leadership understands so well that the more challenges we face from Israel's detractors, the greater the importance we should place on reaching out to other communities, including on their key issues, precisely because it is a reminder that we can never have enough friends as well as a reflection of our highest moral values. And an inherent faith in people of all backgrounds to look for what unites us more than what separates us, including our abhorrence of bigotry and hatred, as our hearts go out to families in Paris of senseless murder and terrorism and the senseless murder in Durham, North Carolina, and anywhere where hatred is a motivation. Determined to marginalize the voices of extremism, even when it is more challenging to do so. And what lets me sleep at night? The knowledge that JCRC has the nimble toolkit that has been proven again and again to work successfully. Building relationships, maintaining a broad tent comprised of people with diverse views, intent on finding consensus to make us stronger, advancing both our universal and our particularistic aspirations as we promote a just society and a secure Jewish future, and growing initiatives from our Israel trip for key leaders to our Institute for Curriculum Services, which focuses on accuracy for Jews, Judaism, and Israel in our school textbooks, initiatives that dramatically enhance the impact of our work. And the immense satisfaction, something we don't emphasize enough, that in addition to safeguarding our community, our behind-the-scenes work is making a difference in people's lives, often at moments of their greatest need. Last week, it included working closely with one family whose child attends high school in the area and was assigned to read an essay entitled Genocide Without Apology, alleging that Passover celebrates and justifies the killing of children and the Seder celebrates the 10 plagues rather than the redemption of a people from slavery. And it includes setting the stage for 26 seventh graders from Brandeis Hillel to tutor through our Jewish coalition at literacy at a nearby elementary school with a 50% Latino population by bringing the school's principal to Brandeis Hillel to talk about what it would be like for Brandeis Hillel students to be in a very different environment. Touching lives and enabling others to touch lives, sometimes one at a time and sometimes entire communities, inspires us each day. In these troubling times, I hope we can all sleep a little better at night because JCRC is here, laser focused 24-7. As I soon enter my 34th and final year as an employee at JCRC, I look forward instead of back at what lies ahead. Preserving the very character of the Bay Area as a community that welcomes and embraces Jews requires all of us to step up our activism to the next level and will require innovative vigilance from campuses to City Hall and the organization best positioned to continue to meet the challenge with our partners within and beyond the Jewish community is the one that is called on every hour of the day, the JCRC. JCRC is known for its can-do approach. When a Jewish social service agency seeks relief from state budget cuts, when a camp needs help on crisis communications, when a synagogue has a polarized congregation, 
when a campus Hillel needs urgent strategic help, when the latest BDS challenge is mounted from Sonoma to Silicon Valley. But in these not business as usual times, can do must become can build to move from the best reactive work out there to even more proactive initiatives with demonstrated impact with sufficient resources to reach way beyond our current reach. By being here tonight and supporting JCRC, you have already helped us greatly. And the turnout tonight, as I said, is record setting. And in absolute truth, we have much more to do to close the growing resource gap caused by the huge spike in Bay Area anti-Israel activism and to ensure long-term financial sustainability. And so let me also add my heartfelt thanks to everyone already committed to our legacy circle. We value your commitment greatly. In the Midrash, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai tells the story of several people sitting in a rowboat. One pulls a drill out and starts boring a hole under his seat. The other passengers yell, what are you doing? The man responds, it's none of your business. I'm drilling under my seat. <laughs> we are, of course, in this boat together, all of us, facing stronger currents each day. That you recognize that we are at a critical juncture and are so committed to helping us secure our community's future reassures us, inspires us, and motivates us. Thank you so much for being here tonight. It's now my great pleasure to invite back to the stage for brief closing remarks, our outstanding event chairs, dear friends, and remarkable community leaders, Gary and Kathy Rant. Gary and Kathy, we are so grateful, and it has been such a joy to have you as our event chairs and champions of JCRC's work in the community. Gary and Kathy. I think it was Eli Weissel that said, life is not just made up of longevity, but of moments. And it's been wonderful to spend these moments of joy from the storm outside with all of you. I hope you agree this has been a really incredible evening. Congratulations again to our inspiring honorees, Mark Dollinger, Porter Walter Mulder, Paul Watermulder, and Sissy Swig. We want to say a very special thanks to all of you your presence and support inspire our efforts. With all the challenges we face, JCRC's work now is more important than ever. If tonight happened to be your introduction to JCRC, we invite you to get more involved. Special thanks to our program participants. Rosalind Franklin. Barry and Debbie Cohn. Mark and Gila Abelson. Michael and Leslie Krasny. And of course, to our one and only Rabbi Doug Kahn. Our hero. Thank you to the entire JCRC staff but especially Abby, John, Jeremy, and Mackenzie. Without whose tireless efforts, none of this would be possible. Thank you to our amazing film producers. Bethany Hornthal, where are you? Woohoo! And Barry Scheinberg, with assistance from Halle Barron. A big thank you for tonight's wonderful kosher meal to Wendy Kleckner. She always does a great job year after year. And thanks, as always, to the professional team of the JCC San Francisco. One brief, important announcement. If you parked downstairs and weren't able to pay for parking yet, your car has been impounded, it will be auctioned, and the proceeds will go to the JCRC. <laughs> Don't worry, you will be able to pay as you exit the garage. All right, and two things. Right as you are filing out, please watch the screen for the important titles, the headlines that this wonderful group has accomplished during the past year. You really got to read them. And now, for the five people left in the room who eat carbs, dessert is in the atrium. Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs>